Hey guys, welcome back to Logic Industries. All right, I've been away so long. It's been uh, assholes and elbows around here. Just been busy. So anyway, I'm back now. So excuse my appearance. I'm dirty. It's getting on to be about about eight o'clock. It's coming to the end of a long day, and I'm <laughs> I'm dirty. It's just the way it is. So anyway, I uh, want to do a I, I don't want to say a rebuttal, but like maybe a a counter argument or a, another perspective maybe is a better choice of words on every, everything you see on YouTube now is about the HSM works or uh, Fusion 360 and their adaptive clearing technology or path tool paths where they try to maintain a solid uh, a constant chip load on the tool to maximize tool life and all that stuff. So what it does is it takes a, you take a full depth of cut and a thinner width of cut at a fairly high feed rate so that you're using a whole flute of your tool and that you maintain the uh, consistent chip load. You don't get like high engagements in the corners and things like that or they try to avoid that to maximize tool life. But the trouble of it is, is that it cuts a lot of air. It spends a lot of time cutting air. So if you've got a machine that has, you know, 1500 inch a minute rapids, that's not a problem. You know, it's totally not a problem. But if you've got a machine like this one behind me here that has 300 inch a minute rapids, or if you've got a Tormach that has 110 or 115 inch a minute rapids, uh, it becomes a problem because you're spending almost as much time cutting air as you are cutting metal. And that's, you don't make money like that. So, I would like to present a counterpoint, if you will. So, this machine behind me here has a five horse spindle. It's a BT40 taper. So, it's, it's, got, a, it's got a more stable spindle than, uh, you know, like a Tormach would, just because it's bigger. But, this is, you know, early 90s technology, old school as far as CNC is concerned. It doesn't have, it's got a 5,000 RPM spindle. It doesn't have, uh, you know, through spindle coolant or any of the whiz-bang stuff. It's a fairly basic, old machine. But it still can move metal. It's stiff, you know, it's got box ways, doesn't vibrate. So if I were to program with the adaptive clearing, it would take, you know, half again or twice as long to cut the same amount of material because the machine is spinning, because it can only follow like maximum feed rate that it's going to follow and not overshoot at the corners is going to be about 100 inches a minute, maybe 125, something like that. So you're not going to be able to run at full tilt boogie while you're cutting metal. And the rapids are only 300 inches a minute, so it's not even that fast when it's not supposed to be cutting metal. So here's what I do. You know, I may be completely full of shit, you know how that works. I'm, just some, I'm one random redneck guy out here in the middle of nowhere cutting metal. So I'm working on 80% uh, Tech 9 mowers right now and uh, I will show this roughing, this this is the roughing pass on the inside of them. I will show the interesting parts of this roughing after we get done yakking here. Uh, and the tool that I'm fixing to show you is the little brother of this one. This is a, a three quarter inch two flute. Uh, it's a carbide, you know, inserted carbide made by uh, Wydax uh, Heinlein in Germany and the little one is the same. This is three quarter. The one that's in the machine here is a five eighths which is the smallest I have of these. Uses the uh, uh, APKT uh, 1003 inserts. They're about four bucks a piece if you buy them on eBay from and that's you know buy them new not surplus and they uh, they got two they got two cutting edges each. You know, they're kind of a little parallel. I don't know if you can see that or not. They're a little parallelogram and these are the high polish, high positive uh, inserts made for cutting aluminum. So the tool that's in the machine here, I'm spinning it 5,000 RPM and I'm taking a depth of cut of 0.2 inches at the full width. So it's 5 eighths of an inch width of cut, 0.2 inches depth of cut, 5,000 RPM at 80 inches a minute. So that's 8 thou per tooth. And uh, we'll show you that here in a second. So I have to sit down and figure. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to do a voiceover on this one. So we'll see how that goes, and 
once I've gotten to set down, I'll figure, figure the metal removal rate on this tool and then compare that to what you would have to move the same size tool in a, a HSM or a, you know, adaptive clearing type mode, how fast it would have to move and the step over you'd have to maintain to get the same metal removal rate. So consider this an old school rebuttal to the adaptive clearing method. Okay, here's a close-up of that uh, tool I was holding here. See, it's a wide axe, hind line. I believe that's a M680 is the tool number. And here you can see the wee little inserts. These are AP uh, HT10003 parallelogram inserts and you can see they got just the tiniest little bit of tiniest little radius on the corner there about uh, 15 thou or so which really makes them pretty durable and you can see it's a two flute so that's uh, I was looking at the footage from yesterday and I realized that uh, you couldn't <laughs> you couldn't see anything so here's a close up hopefully that'll show you more like what you're uh, doing here it's just a tool steel shank indexable end mill and it's it's not center cutting obviously but it does they will ramp about uh, five or seven degrees something like that so you can get into a closed pocket without pre-drill although you'll see in the video I do pre-drill uh, pockets for them to rough out like the trigger guard and stuff like that just because it it's a lot faster to plunge into an open hole than it is to helix down into it so Okay, um, the only reason I put this clip in here is just because I love the little chips that this drill makes. It's just an awesome recipe. That's a 45 64 stub drill, 1630 RPM, 23 inches a minute. Just look at those lovely little chips. These are the starting holes for the 5 8 coming up right here. So, this is a 5 8 inch, two flute. APHT1003 indexable two flute end mill made by uh, Widia Wide Axe uh, Heinlein, whatever. It's German. It smells like sauerkraut. It's uh, running at uh, 200 thou depth of cut, uh, the full 5 eighths of an inch with the cut at 80 inches a minute, which turns out to be a metal removal rate of 10 cubic inches a minute which and then that's when it's at full width like that uh, it's approximately a three horsepower cut and uh, that's the machine will take up to about three tenths of an inch deep but it starts to bog the spindle down and since I couldn't do it in two cuts anyway uh, it seemed dumb to stress the machine that much so this is a pretty healthy cut in order to get that same 10 cubic inches a minute out of a adaptive clearing type uh, strategy tool path um, I'm gonna make a couple of assumptions here but they're pretty um, I would say uh, conservative assumptions I'm gonna assume that the the in cut time the amount of time it spends cutting air is 25 percent so you're going to be in the cut 75 percent of the time which is uh, pretty conservative because honestly it's more likely to be you're going to spend about 60 percent of the time or maybe even 50 percent of the time cutting air or cutting metal so uh, that's you know I don't want to you know do a hatchet job here I just want to point some things out so with a 15 percent step over which is about the starting range that you see most of the time on these you would have to run at 235 inches a minute at the full 0.6 inch depth of cut to equal uh, 10 cubic inches a minute metal removal rate with uh, that 15% uh, step over is 0.094 inches uh, and that's you know that's wholly outside of my machines capabilities and it's outside of most of these smaller or older machines ability to run at that speed you just can't they can't follow the path at that high feed rate so what if you went up say let's do 20 percent step over 
a 20% step over is an eighth of an inch. I'm still assuming a 5 eighths inch diameter tool here. At a 20% step over, an eighth of an inch width of cut, 6.6 .6 inches depth of cut, you get 175 inches a minute as your feed the required feed rate to get 10 inches, 10 cubic inches a minute of metal removed. So it's still outside of my machine's capabilities, outside of a Tormox capabilities. Uh, so I sat down and figured it backwards and in order to actually hit the break-even point or something that my machine could be capable of taking uh, or at least following the path uh, would be a, at 100 inches a minute full 0.6 inch depth of cut the uh, step over would have to be 36 percent or uh, 0.223 inches uh, which is way outside of the HSM parameters that's uh, getting to be a, a very healthy step over for what they would call the adaptive clearing. I, it's probably possible. I have I don't have Fusion 360 because I don't have a computer that'll run it right now. But uh, looking at what is common on YouTube, uh, the 15 to 20 percent seems to be the range that everybody's shooting for. So anyway, take that as you will. You can see here that uh, these those drill points were just uh, to relieve some material so that whenever the tool plunges into these pockets to open up the trigger guard it doesn't have to uh, fight because that's not a center cutting tool, it doesn't have to fight the material to get down in there, it can just uh, ramp back and forth at a fairly steep angle and uh, get down in the pocket a little bit quicker than it would otherwise So, and uh, this is going to be the end of things right now well there we are uh, I don't know if it's a convincing argument but it's an argument you just have to decide for yourself. Like I said, I could be full of shit. It's happened, it's happened at least once before. So, anyway, uh, that's all I got for this one. I'm uh, going to be on these for a couple of weeks now. So, it may be uh, a little quiet on the videos again for a bit, but we'll see. So, um, you know, if you like this, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Uh, if you enjoy what you see here, I appreciate it if you subscribe. Um, I don't, you know, I don't monetize these videos or anything. Uh, if you want to help out the channel or you want to help us continue to bring stuff like this to you, uh, go buy something off our website. That's that's how we support this. It's this is showing our work to the world and hoping that they like it enough to pay us for it. <laughs> that's, a, that's pretty much what it boils down to. I don't do Patreon. I don't do you know ads on the videos or whatever. So if they show up, it's not my fault. I didn't do it. I don't get paid for any of this stuff. This is just, which is also why the videos are kind of intermittent because I got to make them when I got time. And any way you slice it, when you're making videos, everything takes longer. So sometimes I just have to leave the camera put up and just you know get shit done. So anyway, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, give me a subscribe if you like it. And uh, you know, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>